welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. In today's video, we're gonna be giving the dual delay some love. But before we do that, I'm using the Band Commander Amp model, set nice and sparkly and clean with some compression and reverb. Everything you're hearing is the raw DI from the Axe FX3. It sounds like this. <laughs> The Band Commander is such a great sounding amp model. You don't need to tweak it much to get that going on. I've said that before on the channel, but I'll say it again. It's probably my favorite really clean amp. All right, let's go to the delay block over here. I've dialed up the dual delay, stock settings, except I have increased the mix control. Before we talk about anything, let's just hear it. <laughs> Nothing too special just yet. It is a really nicely voiced digital delay, but you can see here we've basically got independent delays on the left and right channel, although at the moment they are set to identical values. So we're just getting a big mono delay. We've got controls for feedback, cross feedback, level and pan on each delay, as well as master feedback, the left right time ratio and the master pan. The first thing I would suggest you try is try this. Set the left right time ratio to 99% so that these two delays are slightly offset. You'll go from this mono delay sound to really wide delay sound. Check it out. <laughs> Really, really nice. It just gives you this, this really big wide stereo image. Another thing you can do is set the left right time ratio to some kind of geometric ratio, like 75%. This is gonna give you that classic quarter note dotted eighth note feel. <laughs> Now we're really starting to get the vibe of the dual delay. With that particular example though, you can hear one channel has more repeats. So if I wanted to set up a kind of true dual delay, I'd do this. I'd set the left right time ratio to 100% and I want this synced to the tempo of whatever I'm playing. So let's set tempo left to a quarter note and tempo right to a dotted eighth note. Now a dotted eighth note is 75% of the value of a quarter note. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to set the feedback on the quarter note to 75% of the feedback on the dotted eighth. I'm just gonna set this to 30. You can keep them in this ratio and if you want more or less feedback, use the master feedback control. But now we have this. <laughs> and I have an equal number of repeats on each channel there, which is what I'm after. Now, if I was gonna use this for a big lead delay, let's turn the compressor off and dial up the JP2C plus yellow shred, I would do this. I would go to the EQ section and bring the high cut control down somewhere around three to 4K and increase the high cut slope. This is gonna warm my delays right up and I get this. <laughs> That's probably my favorite type of lead delay right there, just by adding a bunch of high cut, having that kind of halo around the notes 
pretty gorgeous. So that would be one way I would set up a lead delay. But we haven't talked about the cross feedback on the dual delay yet. And this lets you do a really cool, really desirable classic delay trick. Let's go to channel B here on the dual delay. I'll increase the mix up to about 30% again. And let's do this. This is something borrowed from uh, the old lexicon processes. And you can do this in the multi-tap delay, but you can also do it using the dual delay mode here, setting up like a circular style delay. So what we want to do is let's set the individual feedbacks to zero, set the master feedback to about 40% to start, and let's crank up cross feedback on each of these delays. Now, the trick is we want equally spaced delays, one on the left, then one on the right, then one in the center. Having the cross feedback is gonna let us do that. And basically just set your left delay to be half the value of your right delay. For example, let's set this to 250. And now the echoes are gonna swirl around in a circular fashion. That sounds awesome already, but we can go one step further and on the AxeFX 3, add a bit of diffusion so we can smear out the repeats. Let's just bring the diffusion up to about 20%. You can play around with the diffusion time. I kind of like it at about 50%, but you get this. It's like a cross between a rhythmic echo and a reverb right there. So you can actually do circular delays in the just standard delay block. You don't need the multi-tap delay. Of course, they sound fantastic in the multi-tap delay. One last little trick using the dual delay though is to actually set it up as a dual chorus with independent modulation on each side of our stereo spectrum. So bring up my clean sound again. Let's change over to channel A and I'm gonna to go to channel C on the delay. I've kind of already prepared this one right here. Let's turn the phase reverse to none. But two really short delays, I've just offset them by a few milliseconds. Turn the master feedback all the way down to zero and the mix is at 50%. Then in the modulation section, I've done a few things. I've offset the rates. I've set the LFO shapes to both be sine waves and I've set the depths identical. But then this is where the trick kind of comes in. I have set the phase for LFO one to 90 degrees and on LFO two, it's 180 degrees. So they're actually 90 degrees out of phase with one another and then independently, this one's 90 degrees out of, out of phase with the dry signal. But then I have each LFO to target different delay lines in here. So this LFO just targets the left channel, this one just targets the right, and you get a pretty incredible sounding chorus out of this. <laughs> You can of course play around with the rates, the amount of depth, the phase offset, where you're targeting. This is basically a super customizable chorus. One thing I like that you can do here is go to the tone duck section and just add a little bit of diffusion and make a diffuse chorus. You could also use a bit of phase reverse on here and kind of make this uh, super wide sounding. We get this. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
kind of interesting having that diffusion on the chorus. You could, of course, add some feedback with the master feedback if you wanted a flanger there. So the dual delay is such an amazing creative device lurking in the delay block. If you really, really like fine tuning and honing your delays and you haven't checked it out yet, go and do it. It's so amazing. I really hope you enjoyed these tips and tricks today. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, stay safe, be good to one another. I'll see you all next week for another Tuesday Tone Tip.